Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to our Hurricanes Camp Report. Joe Zagaki with Don Bailey Jr. We're on campus inside the Carroll Sofa Practice Facility. Another week of training camp. Guys are grinding it out, working hard, especially on defense, especially in the trenches, the defensive line, led by Coach Jason Taylor. Yeah, Joe, he's doing a fantastic job. You can see the energy that he has infused in that group, but also his ability to teach technique through experience. You know, as a player with the Dolphins, he was one of the most intense players <laughs> that you would ever be around, a guy that hated losing, and I think that's something that he is also imparting on his players. That has not changed. You can tell he still hates to lose and that he's very, very intense, but he's an excellent teacher and does a great job with technique. Okay, we'll talk more about the defense, defensive line, with defensive line coach Jason Taylor still to come on our Hurricanes Camp Report. All right, let's talk about the uh, defensive line right now with defensive line coach Jason Taylor. You know, I have to say, I always thought watching you play, someday you'd be a coach. How, how much are you enjoying the, the coaching business? Uh, I don't know why you thought that when I was playing because <laughs> I dang sure didn't want to do it. Um, I, I had no, I, a ton of respect for the position, yeah. for what they do. I uh, had no desire to do it. But, um, you know, I retire. I get into, I get into youth football because my, my boys start playing, my mm -hmm. sons start playing. Um, you get addicted to it, you know. That, that, that fire starts burning and you go through youth football in the high school now on the college level. So it's, it's been great. I, I'm loving what I'm doing. Um, all the things that I saw my coach was doing in the time and commitment they spent, it gives you a new respect for it. But uh, I, w I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. That fire that burns is what you had, mm -hmm. what propelled you when you played. Uh, you were very intense. Don and I were talking about how much you hated to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you impose those things into your players? Um, I think number one, you be yourself. You know, you, you can't you can't try to be fake and be, try to be somebody else. Um, while we all have people that we look up to or we em we want to emulate in some ways or or we learn from um, mentors of sorts, whether we were playing or coaching, whatever. I get that, but you can't. I think you have to be, be genuine. You have to be authentic. You have to be yourself. So you know, I don't try to be Coach Cristobal. I don't try to be Nick Saban. I don't try to be Mike McDaniel. You know, I I try to I just stay true to who I am mm -hmm. and. Um, sometimes is that a lot? Yeah, I think sometimes I get a little intense and mm -hmm. fiery and I catch myself, you know, you start hearing that heartbeat in your ear and your eyeballs <laughs> are sweating and you're like, and I have to, you know, you take a step back a little bit, much like what I did when I played, yeah. and, you know, it's everybody's different. Some people can't, can't do it or won't do it or aren't there yet or don't know how to get to that. So mm -hmm. figuring out who everybody is and what the motivation and the buttons are um, to try to elevate their play and not making it's not about me at all but trying to take what God gave them and their their abilities and their motivations um, where they are mentally toughness wise and fi figure out a way that you can kind of bring it out differently from everybody but being authentic and real while doing that the same you're one of your coaches and of course he was a coach here the great Jimmy Johnson mm -hmm. uh, believed building you build a team through the defensive line uh, You've got a lot of guys on your defensive line. Mm -hmm. What have you seen so far through training camp? Um, we're getting better. We're getting better. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we've got the makings to be a pretty darn good unit. You know, they're working. Um, they're buying in. They're committed to it. Um, they're looking for the small details. You know, and, and seeing it a different way. We're you know, we're trying to we're trying to implement a standard. It's mm -hmm. the way of life. Um, you know, people talk about this whole locked in thing and, you know, get focused, get locked in. And I, I tell the guys from day one, I, I don't believe in getting locked in um, or getting focused. Or I just, I, I know people say things differently, and I'm not saying anything bad about people that, that talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I think locked in is a frame of mind, it's a way of life. When you wake up out of bed in the morning, you should be locked in to focus on what you're doing because you want to be elite at what you're doing. You're not going to be average, and then all of a sudden, it's time to hit the grass now. I'm going to be elite on the grass, but then I'm going to be average again when I'm off. So trying to establish that being locked in and being elite is a way of life. We wake up in the morning and our feet hit the ground, and we we're, we, we need to be elite in everything we do, in, a, in our approach, in our, in our mannerisms, in our, uh, our preparation, in our recovery, in our schoolwork, in the community, with the media. Whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, just be elite, and then it just becomes a habit.
you've got a lot of different guys, whether it's a Leonard Taylor or Dean with mm -hmm. experience or uh, Bain, who's doing a lot of different things for you, Mesador, Harvey, Nigel e. Kelly. Mm -hmm. you got a lot of different guys that can do, I think, a lot of things for you, right? Right. Yeah, we got a lot of different body types, different, uh, you know, we're kind of all over the board as far as experience mm -hmm. and age, you know. Um, Again, body types are all over the place, and, and it's it's good. We, I think we have a great mix. We've got we've got some guys that are more pluggers. We got some guys that are edgy guys. We have guys that, that are that are combos that can go inside and out. Um, you know, LT's had a really good camp. Harrison Hunt is yeah. uh, is, is had a, has a real, has had a good camp and is thirsty for information. Branson Dean's been great for us, kind of becoming that bell cow and that leader. You know, an experienced guy that's seen a lot of football, um, seen a lot of football in, in a big conference. So. There's no new surprises to him, and I think our guys are starting to learn from him, and, and he's becoming a great leader for us. Mesador is Mesador. I mean, he's a heck of a player and, and a great teammate and a pro's pro. Um, you know, Mesador and Dean beat me in the building every day. They're here at 5 a.m. I can't get here at 5 a.m. Right. I just can't do it. Like, I live too far <laughs> away, and I refuse to get up at 3.30 to beat them in the building. It's just – but that's, how, that's who they are. They're pros about – they're approaching it as pros, and, and they understand – their bodies, their business, and they're and they're attacking it accordingly. I mean, we got you know Najalik on the edge. Jafari's having a good camp as well. Um, obviously, Ruben Bain. Mm -hmm. You know, Ruben Bain is is doing a lot of really good things. So we got a lot of guys that can play. You know, Jake Jake's had a really good camp as well. Um, Ahmad Moten, I think, has really made yeah. some really big strides. Mm -hmm. you know, I thought played well in the spring. Um, we saw steps. We saw progress there. Was curious to see how I was going to transfer over to sp to summer, mm -hmm. you know, with having that two months off in between, and he's really been a pleasant surprise, and and uh, I think going to help us with some real meaningful football this year. The last thing for you, I think um, sometimes guys that make uh, the transition that you're making, the one obstacle is recruiting, but. I, I swear that recruiting's right in your wheelhouse because you enjoy connecting with young people mm -hmm. and also with parents. I do. Um, you know, my wife, my wife probably begs to differ. She <laughs> thinks I'm a loner and I want to be myself and <clears throat> she'd be left alone. And I tell her, yeah, I do after like 14, 15 hours in the building, like I want to get home and be, and, and be quiet. But um, I do enjoy connecting. Recruiting is, is a challenge, you know. Yeah. The, the recruiting calendar is tough and, and, and uh, you know, what we're trying to do, coaching our team and having to recruit and get guys in the fold. But um, again, it's, I'm a competitor too. I like to compete and, and get after stuff, and I want to be elite in everything I do. So I'm, I'm, we're working hard at it. We're really working hard at it, and we're trying to get the right guys in the building, and the, you know, the right guys on the grass for the Miami Hurricanes, and, and do it the right way. But you know, if we don't get somebody, if we don't get a recruit, it will not be because we got outworked. That's mm -hmm. for sure. It will not be for a lack of effort. Well, thank you for being on the show with us. Great to have you here. We thank look you. forward to a few of your guys coming up with a, a Jason Taylor strip sack this year. Me too. I love to see it. And get in the end zone. Don't just strip and sack. Get in the end zone. Get in the end zone. Sacks and series. Turnovers for touchdowns. Win games, baby. All right. That's Jason Taylor. We'll continue on the show right after this. We're joined with linebacker Francisco Maui Goa. And Francisco, how do you like the University of Miami? You came all the way from Washington State to the University of Miami. A little bit of a change in weather? Yep. I uh, love it here, man. The coaches are very, very oriented and family oriented. Um, it's, just, it's just like home, so it made me comfortable coming here, so yeah. What was your what were your first impression when you got to the University of Miami that you, you didn't really have an idea of? You were like, oh, wow, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never thought I would be here, to be honest with you. But when I got here, I saw I saw some guys. I saw a lot of talent here, and a lot I saw a lot of potential. So it got me going, and it, it, it gave me like a motivation to, to keep pushing myself to be best. So, if I understand this correctly, you have an older brother who played offensive line, right? Yes. And then mm -hmm. you've got the baby brother who yep. plays offensive line. Were you a quarterback at one point in your career in high school? I played quarterback like since youth football until high school uh, and the coaches made a, a transition for me because I, I think I got too big. So, you outgrew it? Yeah, I outgrew quarterback so I kind of went to, to linebacker at my, my junior year or yeah, at, at linebacker at junior year so I mean got a feel of it and got I fell in love with it and just love the physicality so that's why you know you know God had plans for me and that's what he put me in. 
Well, you can still score touchdowns at linebacker. I think you did that a year or two ago at Washington State. <laughs> Didn't you have a pick six? Yeah, it was last year, and I, and I got that pick six, and it was a shocking moment for me. I, t till this moment, I can't believe I did that. So it's got me. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't ready for it, but, you know, you you prepare the right way, and, you know, things like that happen. So, yeah. Tell us about Coach Guidry's defense. What can the Hurricane fans expect? Oh, you're going to expect a very physical and – explosive defense uh, this defense is amazing and I see a lot of creative way he kind of moved guys around and make a feel of it and it's just very creative way to, to get people uh, um, to rush and you know get in good spots that people are like comfortable with it it's important for the linebacking core to have a great defensive line can yep. you can you share with us what your thoughts are on that group defensive line I have been doing good um, in the past practice and they just been opening up uh, holes for the for the linebacker to shoot. So, in my perspective, um, they've been doing uh, good. Coach JT uh, uh, getting them right, and you know, it's just us uh, making them right on uh, in the backfield. So, yeah. Coach Nicholson, outstanding football player in his own right. What's mm -hmm. it like playing for a guy that was so successful at that position? Coach D, D Nick is brings the juice every day. Um, he holds us at a high standard, and that's what I love about him. He holds us at a, at a high uh, level of standard, and you know everybody's not perfect, and we try to get there, we try to reach there, and that's what he holds us accountable with. So I feel like uh, Coach D. Nick really has a big impact, um, and not only in football, but in our overall lives too. So that's a big, big thing for us too, so yeah. How are you helping this young linebacking core? Because you brought in, uh, they brought in a lot of young guys. A lot mm -hmm. of freshmen came in in this class. How are those guys adjusting? This freshman group core, um, very talented group, uh, very smart, very athletic. Um, you see Bob out there making plays, uh, very, very shifty at his, his position, um, going, you know, man coverages, and it's just me being a, being me, and that's what they love to see and. I just love being a role model for them um, if they see me that way. But I try to, I try my, I try my best to pick up, uh, pick up, pick them up as I, you know, as I train too. So yeah. What's it like playing with your six foot six, three hundred and twenty pound baby brother? Oh, I love it. Uh, we've been playing the same same team since, you know, high school football, and being on the same same team at, at the college level is, is a blessing. I love that um, he's doing good and very. Uh, he's a very coachable guy and. You know, going at it every day. Um, you know, we we, we, we we talk trash here and there, but it's it's all part of the competitiveness in, in our in ourselves. So yeah. Well, we're glad you're University of Miami Hurricane. Thanks for being here. I love it here. Thank all you. Right. Don Bailey with Francisco Mario Maui Goa. Excuse me. Yeah, Sorry you, you, about you got that. It, right? I got it right. <laughs> yeah, you all got right, it right. Thank you. All right, a nice look at the Hurricanes defense, a sack total a year ago, somewhere in the 30s. As you mentioned, that's not enough. With Jason Taylor in this defensive line group, they are going to be attacking the quarterback. That they will, Joe. Not only do you want to increase the, the sacks, but you also want to increase the takeaways. That quarterback pressure always leads to some interceptions. You know, it's funny you say that because he was great at the sack and strip, and I think we're going to get a few of those this year. Yeah, and don't forget the sack, the strip, and then the score. Right. <laughs> All right, for Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. Thank you so much for joining us on our Hurricanes Camp Report.